Seattle has had this ongoing effort to recruit more officers, which is an uphill battle. I mean, Seattle is down 500, 600 officers. They are well, well below the place that they need to be for a city that size. They are struggling to keep up minimum staff, minimum staffing requirements. They are struggling to be able to respond to urgent 911 calls. It's a serious public safety emergency. And I don't blame people for not wanting to be cops in the city of Seattle. So one, right now, they're stretched thin. And so I imagine there's some officers trying to look at greener pastures and trying to leave actively. But you have a city that at least for the last three, four years, you've been working for people on the Seattle City Council who have vilified you publicly, uh, who have said they're going to defund your jobs by 50 percent, who have um, scared away the, the, the city's first black female police chief, someone who is incredibly qualified for the job. Um, a city that allowed an entire police precinct to be taken over by activists and then city government not only catered to them, but showed up on the protest lines with them. I mean, wild, wild stuff. So it's not a surprise to anyone that nobody wants to be a cop in Seattle. Well, not nobody, but very few people, not enough people. Uh, and Washington as a whole has the lowest number of police capitas of any state in the nation. There's a reason for that. The political climate has a lot to do with it. So I guess I wasn't surprised, but I continue to be just deeply disappointed with some of the narrative around the recruiting effort with SPD. So our friend Jason Rantz uh, published an article. The headline is, Mayor's Office Demanded Fewer White Men Military in Seattle Police Recruitment. So he got his hands uh, from a source on a memo talking about their ongoing recruitment efforts. And, you know, I think everything that happens under Mayor Bruce Harrell's watch is ultimately his fault. That's part of wanting to be a leader. And I think that he recognizes that. But this seemed like something a staffer had put together. So they're talking about like material for recruitment, recruitment videos, recruitment flyers, anything that you're using to try to lure people to apply to be Seattle police officers. And uh, it was talking about what we need more of in this material, what we need less of. Here's what they said they need less of. Who? Officers with a military bearing, which a lot of people who used to be in the military go on to some sort of law enforcement career because it's kind of a natural fit. I have to laugh, though. Like, what's a military bearing? Is it like fewer officers with a high top haircut? <laughs> like, don't, fewer officers with a high top, a top haircut in recruitment material. Um, it said fewer officers who are white and male. Okay, so that's racist. Uh, fewer officers who are in leadership. So I, I guess maybe they want more sort of rank and file type, and that's who they want to appeal to. But this is absurd for a variety of reasons. One, you know, you hear this phrase over and over about how Seattle's police department or any police department should reflect the community it serves. And I, I think that's important. I think that is a good idea to make sure that you have a police department that's diverse in life experience, uh, diverse in different kinds of races and genders, et cetera. I think it's important for a police department to reflect the community it serves. I have no problem with that. But Seattle is pretty white. <laughs> Seattle's a pretty white place. And so, um, you know, if you have a police department that reflects the community and you're putting a high focus on the racial aspect of that, then yeah, your police department is going to be a majority white. But beyond that, the obvious problem with this is Seattle can't afford to be picky. You, you can't afford to turn away someone because they're white, because they're a dude, because they have a military bearing. You, you, you can't find people who want to work for you. So you're going to go out in this recruitment material and try to appeal to uh, potential, you know, uh, black recruits, Hispanic recruits, females, members of the LGBTQ community, immigrants, whatever it is. Fine. I have no issue with that. But you can't afford to say no to any qualified applicants, regardless of the color of their skin, regardless of their sexual orientation, regardless of their gender. So it's just patently absurd. But I also think, and the publishing of this, and they've since, I think, internally, as Jason Rance reported, there was a lot of pushback about this from members of SPD and from uh, SPD officers who were working on this recruitment and retention plan to say, hey, like, why would you put that in writing? Why would you even include that in here? It's offensive to officers who are white, who are out there doing difficult work, who served our country in the military. And now they're seeing that the mayor's office wants to use fewer of them in recruitment material as if they're not um, doing a good job, as if they're not worthy of being celebrated and put forth as good examples of law enforcement officers. So the whole thing is just ridiculous. And again, it sounds like the mayor himself, 
uh, perhaps wasn't directly involved in the crafting of that particular memo, but the mayor is responsible for what happens under his leadership. So again, you're just hurting yourselves more, you're hurting the department more by putting forth these surface level things to try to recruit additional officers. It's not going to help you recruit additional officers. It's going to alienate the officers that you've already got. Uh, and again, I go back to it. You can't afford to say no to people who are qualified. Even if you got a recruitment class and it's a hundred percent white men who used to be in the military, you probably should take it. You probably should accept every single one of them with overwhelming gratitude and just be happy that someone wants to be a cop in your city.